What is the one dish that is of proudly African origin, beloved to West Africans, nourishing, colorful, known for its incredibly rich, smoky taste, and everyone swears their version is the best? You got that right. It's jollof rice. The mere mention of jollof rice will have countries like Ghana, Senegal, Nigeria, Liberia, and Sierra Leone gearing up for battle. So deep and fanatical is the love for jollof rice, especially in West Africa, that foodies in the region often engage in supremacy battles, pitting Nigeria, Senegal, Ghana, and Liberia against each other. The battle, referred to as the Jalof Wars, has been fought for many, many years on social media and in food festivals across the region and in the diaspora. Right alongside this friendly war, Jalof food festivals have emerged, and Jalof themed events have been held in the US, from Washington DC to Atlanta, Boston and Houston, as well as in Toronto, Canada. Since 2015, World Jollof Day has been celebrated every 22nd of August across the globe. You might ask, what is it about this dish that has the world in such a frenzy? And to answer that, we must start from the very beginning. The African continent boasts an array of indigenous nutritious food crops that nourishes its 1.2 billion population. One such crop is rice, which history on the continent dates back over 3,000 years. The African rice, known as Oriza glabarima, is believed to have first been grown in the central Niger Delta, and later in Gambia, Casamans, and Sokoto basins before it spread throughout the continent. Today, the continent cultivates both the African and Asian rice, which is a staple to many nations. Its demand is estimated to grow at more than 6% per year, much higher than any other staple food in Sub-Saharan Africa. Rice is the predominant dietary energy source in West Africa today, and is the second most important source of calories in Africa. While rice is used to prepare several dishes across the continent, the most popular one, particularly in West Africa, is jollof rice. It is believed that jollof rice has its roots in the Wolof Empire, an ancient West African state that ruled parts of modern-day Senegal. The Wolof people were said to have migrated to different parts of West Africa, taking with them their sumptuous rice dish. Before rice undergoes its transformation to the magical dish known as jollof rice, there is a whole journey that it must take. This journey starts on the farm, where rice paddies take an average of 120 days from planting to be ready for harvest. Let's hear from Moussa Dabo, founder of Mauro Farms, a large-scale rice farm in the Gambia. In 2012, when I was in the US, my family called and said they needed a bag of rice. Before then, I never knew people had to buy rice because my father used to do rice in the local. I did a, a little bit of research and realized uh, that in Gambia, actually, we do need about uh, 130 million US dollars of rice every year. Out of that, about 80% is imported. So I saw an opportunity in there. We do focus on seed production then we will disseminate I mean, uh, our seeds to farmers. They will be able to multiply that. Once they multiply, then they either pay us for the, for the other inputs like uh, fertilizer and then the plowing in kind. And then the rest of their rice, they could either keep for personal consumption or they can sell it to us for processing and then we provide uh, services like plowing inputs and then the, um, against the crops of the farmers they pay back those services and inputs and then the, and then the remaining of the grain that they have we, we can buy it from them to add value the variety of rice depends on the ecology uh, but as far as where i am at right now uh, we do the uh, medium duration varieties. The most popular one that we do 
is called the Sahel 177A. A, that, that subscript A stands for aroma. It has some aroma to it. So we source the foundation seed from there and we I mean, multiply it and then be able to spread that um, to other farmers. Rice undergoes a number of post-harvest operations before it makes it to the kitchen. Rice millers and processors have to attain clean, stone-free, edible rice and sometimes engage in biofortification to make the end product more nutritionally dense. Next, we go to Chinedu Okere, Managing Director at Oscharis Farms Limited, to learn more about rice processing. For rice, you look at the paddy first. So the, when the paddy is delivered into the meal, so the paddy is uh, poured into the uh, inlet pit and through the inlet pit it goes through the precleaner and the precleaner helps to remove impurities. From the precleaner it goes to the soaking tank. It stays in the soaking tank where water is added and is soaked for a minimum of 8 hours. Cooked for just about 20 minutes and uh, the soaking tank helps to send minerals and the vitamins on the shell, on the husk, into the rice itself. After that process, it is dried, dried to the moisture level that is required. And after drying, it is sent to the classifier. Classifier removes, using the force of gravity to remove the additional lighter impurities that are there. The, the dried part now is sent into the distoner. And the distoner removes the stones. It is sent to the dehusker. So the dehusker uh, removes the husk from the rice. Then it is sent to the tray separator and at this point the uh, husk is put separate and uh, removed separately uh, from the rice and at this uh, process the end point of that process is to have the brown rice so from the brown rice it is sent to the whitener so the whitening process uses the abrasive force to uh, remove the lighter membranes which is called the bran bran and leaving the rough rice now, which is sent to the uh, polisher. And from the polisher, the polisher uses a little water and air to ensure that the rice is smoothing. It's smoothing to what you see that uh, uh, everybody eats. So, and it is now sent to the thickness grader. The thickness grader removes the immature grains. After removing the immature grains, it's now sent to the color uh, sorter. So the color sorter grades the different types of rice, from the premium brand to maybe the gold or uh, which we call the second, uh, second grade, and then even the, the reject. And at this point, each of them is sent into their bins and they are packed from there into different bags. Rice processing business is challenging as well as rewarding. Challenging in the sense that you must have the right knowledge on how to produce rice. And this experience, the high point of it is within the parboiling process. If you get it right at the parboiling process, but you don't have the right equipment to distone, you don't have the right equipment for color separation, you still produce a bad rice. Because of that, it's very expensive to set up a good rice meal. You also need people who have good experience in rice production. So these are the two risks much associated with rice production. Then for the reward, rice is eaten by large population, especially like in Nigeria, where you have more than 200 million people. These are 200 million rice eating population. So, no matter what the type of rice you produce, no matter the quantity you produce, there is market for it. We now have the primary ingredient for jollof, the rice. To make jollof rice, the rice is usually cooked in some broth with an assortment of seasonings such as ginger, garlic, curry, thyme, and bay leaves, and of course, vegetables. Vegetables such as tomatoes, onions, and peppers, which form the stew base and give it that authentic African taste. Chef Pinta has her roots in both Sierra Leone and Ghana. 
she recently received the highly coveted Best Culinary World Prize, making her the first West African in history to do so. It's a special dish because it also has created a lot of conversation around African gastronomy and it's a dish that brings people together in Africa. So most times when you think about wedding, name, naming ceremonies, um, even funeral, we even joke in Ghana that the funeral jollof is the best jollof because it has smoke in it. So it's, it's, a, it's a happy dish, it's a sad dish, it's, it's a dish that brings community together. The Sierra Leone jollof is a very interesting one. I feel like it's underrated. We actually have the closest to Senegalese jollof because the Senegalese jollof, in my opinion, is the best jollof because they created jollof and it's very rich. It has so many vegetables in it. The Sierra Leone jollof is, is almost like that. So we use a lot of vegetables. Also, we use assorted meats for our jollof. So it's a, it's a very interesting one, but people don't know much about it because the con conversation around jollof is just between Ghana and Nigeria. But there are so many other jollofs around the continent that it's, it's amazing. I believe we we have so many interesting chefs coming from Africa now and everybody is claiming that they have the best jollof. So that has created a lot of conversation and attention to African gastronomy itself. And a lot of people outside the continent are curious because of that. They want to learn more about African cuisine aside jollof. And most of them also want to try jollof. And even some of them are battling because when they try one versus the other, <laughs> they tend to say, oh, no, I prefer this one than this one. So that's a good thing. And a lot of these chefs are celebrating Africa through these dishes. And because we are highlighting jollof, that also means we are highlighting other, we are drawing attention to other um, dishes from Africa. So we are celebrating the culture, the traditions of African gastronomy. We are telling our stories through these um, food battles. So it's, it's a beautiful thing. I really love the way African cuisine is going. And I think African gastronomy is the future and the future is now. My name is Toby Ogumbajo, me fully. I'm the first girl of three, born to a Togolese mom and a dad from Badagri. And that's where I get my cooking skills from, from my Togolese heritage. From my personal experience, I sincerely think that the best jollof rice is a united recipe between all the countries. My recipe comes from a fusion of all the countries. You know, like I said, I'm half Togolese, I'm half Nigerian, I have an auntie that lives in Togo. I have an auntie that comes from Ghana. So I learned from all of this. I learned from my auntie in Kotonou. I learned from my auntie in Togo. I learned from my auntie from Ghana, you know? And of course, with my own personal touch, even if we do not like to agree, truthfully, Jollof Rice unites us. An interesting thing to note is that the Jollof Rice preparation method and name quite often varies from country to country or even home to home and each country swears that their version is the absolute truth best <laughs> in ghana and nigeria where we have arguably the largest number of jollof rice fanatics the dish prepared is called jollof rice Nigerians are known to favor the parboiled long grain rice for its ability to stand up to slow cooking without becoming soggy the essentials for Nigerian jollof rice include seasonings such as curry powder, dried thyme, bay leaf, ginger, garlic, and pepper, fried or grilled beef or chicken. The jollof rice is usually accompanied by side dishes such as salads, fried plantains, and bean pudding, also known as moi moi. Ghanaians favor the scented thai jasmine rice and use more of aromatic spices like fennel, aniseed, and black pepper. The jollof rice is then served with salads, vegetables, and sometimes the popular Ghanaian shito, a special blended mix of green scotch bonnets. In Senegal, the dish is known as shabujen, made with broken jasmine rice originating from Vietnam during the colonial era, cooked in a seasoned stew of fresh or pureed tomatoes, seafood, fish or meat, broth, and vegetables such as cassava, carrots, and aubergines. Across the francophone countries, including Burkina Faso, Guinea, Côte d'Ivoire, Benin, and Togo, it is called Riza grass, translated as fat rice, 
in reference to the short grain variety used in making jollof rice in these parts. The recipes in the region are similar to the Senegalese version and include whole vegetables such as okra, cabbage and potatoes. Regardless of how it is cooked, the result is always an unrivaled phenomenal experience. From street stalls to local restaurants, parties, corporate events, battles on social media and jollof festivals, Africans and non-Africans alike have crowned jollof rice a winner and shining star again and again. Today, the jollof festivals are getting bigger and bigger and the reach is getting broader as millions of people across the globe continue to discover and relish the dish. In fact, we have seen a new trend in promoting jollof rice as a truly global dish. Bio Foods in the US and Vero Foods in the UK sell packs of microwavable two minute ready jollof rice and jollof sauces, which are available on platforms such as Amazon and Tesco and in in store locations across the UK and US. For us at African Food Change Makers, the incredible story of jollof rice is a reflection of Africa and Africa's food and agriculture landscape. Such as resilience, boldness, bountiful, nourishing, full of promise and power. Jollof rice is able to build bridges that connect people all over the world.